Hey guys, it's Kat and I am back today to update you on my hashtag Team Project Pan 2023. I keep, my brain keeps wanting to say 2020. 2023. Um, now, this is only the first month check-in because I started my Project Pan a month late this year, mainly because I started my Mac Project Pan in January and I sort of wanted to give that a little bit of breathing time because it's only a three month Project Pan um, to get some used up products into Mac to trade in for lipsticks before the back to Mac program ends. So if you did want to check out that video, um, my update was only a couple of weeks ago. So I'll link that in the description box, but I've got at the moment two project pans going on, but at the end of March, um, I'll incorporate a lot more makeup into this one once that Mac one has ended. So um, at the one month check-in, I am fairly happy with my progress. I feel like at the moment, like the makeup I'm wearing is actually, I've been first impression testing out some Australis makeup. So I'm not actually wearing much makeup um, from this project pan besides the base products and my brows and mascara. So um, I will have my makeup in the description box if you're interested, but I've also got a first impressions video either coming or has just been put up. Depends which one I edit first. Besides today, I feel like it's, my makeup is a bit Groundhog Day-ish. So I'm getting a little bit sick of project panning, I want to admit, but I am seeing some good results. So I need to balance that a little bit, like add a little bit more excitement, but also use up products. I don't know. Sometimes you get into a little bit, a bit of a rut where you're like, Ugh, I don't like this foundation too much. Why am I wearing it every single day? Um, but I've seen progress, so that's why I'm doing it. All right, I'm gonna start as per usual with the products that I've used up. My sort of goal in my project pan is to at least use up one product a month, um, and it's harder to do at the start, but I did mention in my intro that I introduced some sort of easy products that I knew I would be close to finishing fairly early, so it keeps the sort of motivation and the empty sort of ticking over. Um, and then I'll tell you what I'm rolling in to replace those and then give you updates on the other products. Um, all right, the first thing I used up was my Antipodes oil. This is the Divine Face Oil. It's rosehip and uh, avocado oil. Now, when I introduced it, it was, that was a green mark from Nail Polish Mark. It was down to there. If I use this just on my face, uh, I probably might not have even finished it by now, but I got very sick of this and I very quickly started using it on my body and I used it up very quickly. Now, the reason I didn't love this is because it's very, like not sticky, but it stays very oily on the face. I like rosehip oil. It works well with my oily skin. It actually helps um, even out skin oil production, oil production, that's it, not skin production. Um, I find that if I use a good oil at night, which I don't do every day these days, but when I used to have quite a lot of hormonal breakouts um, and a lot of oiliness, I used to use rosehip oil religiously and it really helped heal the spots and also stop my skin thinking it needs to overproduce oil. So it actually calmed down the oiliness. So I always have rosehip oil around. This avocado and rosehip oil though, it just sat on my skin and to the point where I'd put it on after like I've washed my face in the evening, I'd go downstairs, I would be up for a couple of hours and I'd be picking cat hair off my face or fluff or my own hair just off my face. And if I'd lie in bed, I'd be like, I'd just feel like I had fluff on my face because it didn't actually sink into my skin. It just stayed as a layer on top and I hated it. So I put it on my body, I used it up. I don't like it, so that's gone. Now, what I'm gonna be replacing that with is actually, I'm gonna to try to use this as a serum. Um, this is an eye serum. It's from Innisfree. It is the Jeju Lava Seawater Eye Cream. Now, I don't use eye creams. I just, firstly, I can get milia, so those little white dots from that, because when your skin is like literally rejecting the, the product, it's too heavy for your skin, I can get milia fairly easily. Um, so gels or serums are a lot better around my eyes, but I just find it better to use a gel or a serum that I can put all over my face and bring up to my eyes. So it's just one step. I don't want to have to put a serum on my under eye area and then close that, open up another one and put on my face. I just feel like if I can use one that's gentle enough to go up to my eye area, then that's 
that's how I like to live my life. So I actually, when I do have eye serums or eye creams, I actually, unless they're particular like targeted eye products, like the ones that are supposed to like, you know, tighten the skin temporarily or deep puff or something, I tend to just use them all over my face, which is how I'm going to use this. So at the moment, this is actually an airless pump. So it goes up, 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 up. And at the moment, the product sits at that line there, which I marked it blue this month. So blue on blue is not the best, but that's where it's at. And I'm just going to use this as like a serum all over my face and just see how I go. I probably will use it during the day um, because I have some sort of more active uh, like retinols and um, acids that I like to use at night. So I like to use more of a hydrating type product during the day. Um, and that's, yeah, it's going to be an all over face and eye serum. The next thing I used up and I only used this up today. So I feel like um, I don't, I've it, repli I'm going to replace it with a couple of products, but I'm not sure which one I like the most just yet. Uh, it's my little Rimmel Scandalize Col Kajal pencil. This was in Gilded Gold. Um, this is sort of like a, it's like an olive tone. So it's like a old gold olive tone. Now this was getting really old whenever I sharpened it. Like I'll have a photo on the screen of where it was at and where it's at to now. Like there is a difference. There's a huge difference. Whenever I used it, it would pretty much smudge and then I'd have to resharpen it and it would smudge and then I'd resharpen it. So this somehow became really... Um, it wasn't a hard formula anymore. Uh, it was creamy enough that you can apply it, but it was almost like applying a stick eyeshadow rather than a pencil, if that makes sense. So this was very, very mushy. Um, and so whenever I'd want to get the sharp point so I can actually use it as an eyeliner, um, pretty much every time I used it, I had to sharpen it. So that's why it's so low. And I went to go use it today and I was sharpening, sharpening, and it kept breaking, breaking, breaking. And it got to a point where I'm like, I can see the end of it. There's no more product there. So it's done. Now, because I only, it was only done today, um, I've got two eyeliners, if I find the other one. I've got two eyeliners that I want to replace it with. Now, I was originally just going to put this Revlon Colorstay um, bronze eyeliner in. This is a retractable eyeliner, and I do like it. I actually, when I did a bit of a declutter, with my eyeliners. Um, I did a little video on TikTok of that. Um, I kept some aside that I wanted to pan this year. Um, and if I can get through them fairly quickly, I'd love to do that so I can, you know, get use out of them and use them up. This was one that I was like, I like the color. I just don't really reach for it too often. And I think the reason is because it's this nice bronzy shimmer, but it's too light to actually line the eyes for me. I like a liner that sort of gives the eye shape. It sort of needs to be dark enough to work with your eyelashes to give that shape. If it's too light, it's it sort of doesn't stand out enough in my opinion. So I put this on my waterline today and my tight line, but I'm just curious to see how I'm going to use this. It does have quite a lot left, so it just keeps going. It's quite a lot. I find that um, sharpenable liners I get through quicker because you actually waste a bit when you're sharpening them. But these retractable ones, um, I tend to take a lot longer to get through. So this is actually going to be probably one that's going to take me quite a few months. I might, just because of the color, I might end up using it as like a smudgy eyeshadow type effect. I'm not too sure. But I want to, and it's got a smudger on the end as well. So you can put on and sort of smudge it out. But yeah, I want to get, I want to use this one up. But I'm also well aware that it might, I might not have, I might not be able to use it as a traditional eyeliner. Uh, because of the shade. So what I thought I'd do as well is actually um, bring in another eyeliner that is dark enough to use as a like sculpting eyeliner. Now this is from Linda Hallberg Cosmetics or LH Cosmetics and it is Vega Flash. Now this is a shimmery eyeliner in a dark olive shade. So this is darker than um, this the Rimmel one that was a bit more shiny and um, a little bit lighter but you can see that that one will give you the definition on the eye this one will not so um and it's also sharpenable yay so i'm going to incorporate both of these and see how i go with them track the progress and if i don't like one i'll just decide to use it in a different way or declutter it but i didn't want to be restricted with just the bronze one um i thought look if i don't like it i'm gonna i want to see progress in another one so i'm introducing two 
All right, so those are the two empties, but uh, there is one other product that I'm so close to finishing that I might preemptively introduce another similar product. So this is my Walida Skin Food Body Lotion. Now, uh, I store it this way because it's very thick, so it's hard to get the product out. I thought I'll store it upside down. It was up to here last month. It's now down to around here, and I think it's really, this part of the bottle is very thick plastic, so it's hard to shine a torch through and see where it's at. But I feel like there's like, if I do a full body application, it's gone. Um, I did one this morning <laughs> to see if I could use this up. I didn't quite get there, so, um, I am going to keep this in like, but I think you'll be done is what I'm saying. So I'm not going to consider this an empty, but it is so close to being done that I do also want to introduce something new so I can keep the progress happening. And I'm going to uh, introduce this Derma B Daily Moisture Body Lotion. Now this is a Korean uh, body lotion. I got this from YesStyle and it's just a really nice basic body lotion. Um, no added... It's the five non-added formula. So I don't know what it's not added, but I know it's not fragrance. It's not blah, 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 da, da, da. Um, it's all in Korean, but it is a nice sort of light nourishing body lotion. And at the moment it's down to here. So I thought this is one that I can get out of my bathroom because I've got a bit of an accumulation going on. All right, let's get through the body products really quickly because they're big and annoying and the story is pretty similar. I'm making progress. This is the sole... Uh, body wash, soul body body wash. Um, it is, it is there. Now I did mention I don't love the scent of this. It's a little bit sort of coconutty, tropical, and I don't like coconut scents. A few people last month were giving me suggestions on how to mask the scent. It's not that bad. It's just, it doesn't linger. It doesn't linger on my body. I just, I just don't love it. I just don't love it. So I want it gone. And I like other things in my bathroom a lot better. So that's the only reason I'm focusing on it, but I've made some okay progress. Uh, I, at the rate I'm going, it'd probably be another two or three months use usage, but that's fine. No problem. Um, with my cleansing oil. So this is the Haru Haru Wonder Black Rice Moisture Deep Cleansing Oil, unscented. Um, so it was there, it's down to there again. I think at that rate, uh, I could maybe hopefully if I, I don't know if I can use it more, I've been using it pretty much every night um, but there is a technique that someone suggested in the comments that I have only done twice and I can probably do that a lot more and I'll talk about that in a second so I, I'm hoping to get this done by next check-in and I don't have any other cleansing oils or cleansing balms that I want to use up at this point in time I've just opened one in my other bathroom it's a really nice cleansing balm so I'm sort of using it sparingly so once this is gone I'll just replace I don't know, with a different skincare product or I don't know, whatever. But um, someone mentioned using this on your legs when you're shaving. Now, I don't shave my legs too often. I'm going to put it out there. It's like if it's once a week, I'm doing I'm doing well. Not great to use this in the shower if you want to shave your legs because once it hits water, it turns into a milk and it, it washes away. But if you have forgotten to shave your legs or you're like, oh, I didn't expect it to be so hot today. I'm wearing shorts and I've got hairy legs that I want to shave. Like you don't have to shave your legs if you don't want to, but um, this is actually really good for dry sha shaving. So you put your leg up in the sink, you put a few pumps of this on your leg. It gives you a really nice close shave because the oil just like is really good to get the razor going. And then you just wash it off because it turns into a milk and it's really good. So this is a good shaving product, but a good like out of shower shaving product. But I've done that twice and it does use up quite a few pumps on each leg. So um, that is a good way to use this up. I don't want to exclusively use it up in that way because I, again, I don't shave my legs too often. I feel like I use it more on my face than I do on my legs, but uh, it's a good additional way to use it. I'm really loving this stuff. Uh, so this is the Sun By Me Bye Bye Blemish Vitatox Cleansing Bubble Cleanser. Now I explained last time, it gets a bit gunky, doesn't it? I explained last time that this is a product that you're supposed to put on um, dry skin and it's, it's, it's like a bubble mask. It's like a cleansing bubble mask type product. So you put it on and it creates that like shaving cream sort of foam. I don't, I, know, I like the product. It smells so zesty and so citrusy. It's really beautiful. It's like a nice zingy wake me up in the morning, but I don't 
remember to like put on dry skin. It's just not a step that I like to do. I much prefer to use this in the shower and it does build up to a light sort of like shaving cream lather, but not that sort of foaming bubble thing that it can do on dry skin. So um, I like using this. It's a nice cleanser. I enjoy using it. it. It makes me feel nice and vibrant. And because it's so thick, I don't use heaps of it and I only use it in the shower. So I've got a different cleanser at my sink. So this one, um, the progress is slow, but I'm fine with that because I do want to use it um, because I don't want it to just sit there and gather dust, but I also don't want to force it because it's a really nice product. So I'm happy with that amount of progress. Another product that I should be done with next check-in is the 11 Australia Miracle Spray Hair Treatment. Um, I, I don't love this because I feel like it doesn't do much. I got, the claims, the 11 claims sound beneficial. Like there's um, a heat treatment in there and a this and a that and blah, blah. But in terms of how it makes my hair look, I don't really see a big difference between when I use it and I don't use it. So I don't see the point of it. So I want to use it up. It is currently down to here. So it was there last month. So I should have it done by next month, which is great. Um, before I get on to makeup, I want to mention that my lip gloss is currently in my car and my car is at my partner's parents' house with my kids. So I will insert a photo of where I'm at with my lip gloss. I feel like I've done, I've been using that quite a lot. Um, it's a Sigma sort of lip gloss oil thing. Uh, it's nice. I use it most days. So I, I know there's usage on that, but I don't know how much at the moment, but there's usage. Um, all right. My fragrance ugh, again, hopefully this is done by next check-in. This has been going since last year. It's down to here and there's look very little left. Now, if I've been using that much at a time, hopefully like the glass is quite thick down the bottom. Hopefully that'll be done by next check-in. Realistically, if it's not, I'm just going to tell you if I'm gathering my stuff and I'm like, I, I'm so close to being done. I've got like two applications left. I'm just going to use it as a room spray, which I do already, but I'm going to use it in more rooms to make this done. If it gets to next check-in and it's not already done. So it's going to be done. I promise you it's going to be done because it's, it's enough. My two foundations. These are both by L'Oreal and I don't love them. They're the True Match Nude Plumping Tinted Serum. I have shade uh, very light and light and I sort of am between the two. Now this dewy effect is not from these, just letting you know. Um, they're supposed to be more like hydrating and supposed to look quite glowy, but on me they look very dry for some reason. My skin doesn't like the hyaluronic acid or whatever in this. Um, they've got a lot of alcohol in it as well, but I've had foundations in the past with alcohol and my skin's fine with them. So I think it's the hyaluronic acid. It just, it's like sucking the moisture out of my skin rather than keeping moisture in. Anyway, so this dewiness is from the Australis bronzer blush highlighter sticks that I am got a review either up or coming up of. So so this can't take credit for it, but um, I've been using these pretty much mixed. So I'm getting very similar results. And in one month I've made good progress. Again, I feel like it's only got a month and a half, two months ago to go to finish both of these. And I'm very happy to do that because I don't like them. Um, the I'm adding something in. Now, this is another thing that I bought fairly recently. I have done a review that's not yet edited, but it'll be up by the time this is up. Um, it's the Maybelline Perfector 4 in 1 Glow Makeup. This is supposed to be like a dupe for Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. Um, and I don't like this on its own, but I do like mixing it with these because these are quite dry for me. I feel like a 50-50 split um, adds a bit more glow. So I actually have this combo on underneath the product. So if you can see the glow on my forehead, for example, that is from this combination. So because I prefer these together than separate, I thought it's going to come into my project pan because... I want to use them together. So this one is an airless pump. It goes down. So I've marked it and we'll just see how much I can use over the next couple of months while those foundations are still on the go. Um, this concealer, it's also by Maybelline. It's the Super Stay Active Wear. Um, my shade is 15. I don't love this. And I was saying last month, I'm just seeing how I can use it. Now I've actually found that if I take out the stopper, which I've done, so it's very messy now because I've taken out the stopper, um, I can use this on top of like a dewy 
base of whether it's like um, a decent layer of moisturizer or SPF I can sort of put this on and blend it in and sort of make a lighter foundation from it I like using it that way now I think last month I did actually weigh this but now I'm sort of scraping down the side and seeing where it settles because that's it's a very runny product and I feel like that's just I prefer to track it that way so that's how I'm tracking it from now on but another concealer I do love this as a concealer it's just a little bit dark for me it's the uh, NARS uh, soft matte complete concealer in the shade custard a little bit dark for me uh, again look we're at the moment when I'm filming we're in the absolute last couple of days of summer so I wanted to get this done but again I can use this sort of all over the face but if I just had under the eyes it just looks a little bit dark compared to the rest of my face, especially if I wear a lighter coverage foundation, which sort of wears down throughout the day, I'm left with these like peachy bits under my eyes. So I do use this under my eyes because I do like it, but um, with foundations like this that is a bit sheerer, um, if there's any areas that I want to build up a bit of coverage, I'll go in with this on a sort of a stippling brush, buff it in so um, it just doesn't look like the dark areas under my eyes it's sort of a little bit more blended across the face so um, I don't know if you can see any usage once we hit pan you'll start seeing the usage happening more and more but right now um, look there'll be photos on the screen but I'm not sure if you can see much progress all right powder products um, with my Winky Lux matte powder um, I haven't been using this as much as I could because I am favoring my MAC loose powder because that one has a deadline that I want to get it back to MAC. Um, I mainly use this, uh, when do I use this versus my matte one? I mainly use this one when I want a little bit of a touch up because this has more coverage than the loose powder that I'm using, but I still have progress. Last month I'd hit pan just in the middle and you can see the pan's getting bigger. So even though I'm not using it too often, to be honest, if I was using this every day, it would be gone. That's how much powder I use. But um, there is some progress, even though I'm not using it too much. Um, my Too Faced bronzer. I have been using this. I've been using it as a bronzer and also as an eyeshadow sometimes. Um, my kid took a bite out of it yesterday. So there, there's teeth marks. He's helping me project pan and he thinks it's yummy. Um, there was a little dot in there, but it was from a crack. So I hadn't actually hit pan on it, but I was using that as like a point of reference where I could sort of like maybe try to hit pan focus on that area and sort of expand it. Um, but this is, yeah, all kinds of messy. I just need to get it get it done. It's been around for a long time and it's it's been in the wars, obviously. So uh, that's what it looks like now. And I'll have a photo on the screen of where it was up to. Last check-in. Um, yeah, this one's seen some stuff. My Dior highlighter. Um, look, it's, I have a photo on the screen. I don't know if the pan's getting any bigger. We're so close to finishing it up, um, but Similar to the powder, I am favoring a sort of shimmery highlight product from MAC to get that done by the end of March. Um, so this one only comes out a couple of times if I want to really sort of brighten the highlighted area, which I don't want to do too often. I also sometimes use this as an eyeshadow as well with the um, Too Faced bronzer. All right, my brow pomade from Benefit. This is the Cabral. Uh, pomade. I started paying this last year. They take forever to pan. Um, I have hit the side, so I'll have photos uh, on the screen of where I was up to last month. Hopefully that bottom section is just getting bigger and bigger. That's the only way I can sort of track it. Someone asked in the last video what brush I use with this. Now I did reply, but I'm not sure if that person saw the reply. I am a simple creature. If there's a brush in the lid, chances are I'm going to use it. You could even do this if you want. So you can even extend it. I don't. I just use a little brush, put it in, get in there. If I want to clean this, I just get some isopropyl alcohol, give it a bit of a wipe down, um, like take the product out and that's how I use it. So I, I'm a simple creature. The brush is in the lid. I use the brush. So that's that one. Last two things. I've got my Nabla cereal liner. I'm going to be honest. I think I've only used this once. So I will have weight comparison on the screen, but if there's a change, I will be shocked because I think I've only used it once. Um, Urban Decay Primer Potion. I feel like this is the never ending story. Um, it feels so thin and so squeezed out and to the point where even on the wand, there's not much left, but whenever I squeeze it to get product out, there's plenty that comes out and I feel like there's still plenty in there. So uh, again, I'll have weights on the screen, but I don't, 
I don't think this is going anywhere fast. So there's that. Also, another thing that needs to be weighed um, is my mascara. This is my Rimmel Kind and Free Mascara. I'm wearing it today. I wear it every day. Unless I'm not wearing makeup or I've misplaced it for some reason, I use this all the time. Um, one coat gives you sort of like a nice fluttery natural look, which I use on a daily basis. Uh, today I've put two coats for a bit of a more dramatic effect. I think it's a great mascara. It's just quite versatile. It's not too wet where it like makes your lashes sort of clump and go funny. Um, but I do think it's drying up a lot. I still feel like there's a lot in there. So I'll have weights on the screen. Mascaras take forever to use up. So um, the weights, there might not be a big difference, but trust me, I've been using it a lot. I've been using it a lot. All right, I've got to get going because I've got family coming home any minute now and I've got makeup and products everywhere that my kid will get into. So uh, I'm going to wrap this up, but let me know how you're going if you're doing a project pan. What's your favorite product to pan? What's your least favorite product to pan? My favorite would probably be foundations. My least favorite would probably be, and powders because they're easy, um, would probably be lip products. Lip products are hard. They're hard. Anyway, um, all the products I mentioned will be in the description box. So if I forgot to mention the name of the bronzer, which I know I forgot to mention, it's a Too Faced Chocolate Soleil bronzer, I will have it listed in the description box. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.